Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch What Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. This episode is sponsored by Uber One. We've all used Uber for rides, and I love using Uber Eats for food delivery, okay? Hello. I mean, I kind of live off of it. But have you ever heard about Uber One? Uber One is a membership that helps you save on Uber and Uber Eats. With an Uber One membership, you get exclusive member perks, like up to 10% off Uber Eats and a $0 delivery fee on eligible orders. It just makes sense. I'm always getting Ubers. I'm always doing Uber Eats. This is the perfect sort of membership for me. I use this all the time. Some restaurants charge so much for the delivery fee, and I order a ton of food. I've saved hundreds of dollars using this. One membership to save on Uber and Uber Eats. Join Uber One today. Go to uber.com slash Uber One to learn more. Zero dollar delivery fee and percentage off discount subject to order minimums and participating stores. Taxes and other fees still apply. Feta cheese. I just got feta cheese from the store. And guess what I used? Instacart, Ronnie. I used Instacart. Of course you did, because that's what we use every single time. Get what you need now on Instacart. Pay now or later with Klarna. Instacart and Klarna make it easy to shop and pay now or later. When you order delivery through the Instacart app or Instacart.com, you can check out with Klarna and have more flexibility to pay in a way that fits your lifestyle. Get delivery in as fast as one hour, or you can select Select a delivery window that best fits your schedule. Shop and pay in a way that works for you. Start your cart on the Instacart app or instacart.com today. New customers get $20 off your first two orders of $80 or more per order when you pay with Klarna using code Klarna20. Terms apply. See instacart.com or download the app for more details and to start shopping. Check out with Klarna to pay now or later. California resident loans made or arranged pursuant to a California financing law license. Watch what crap is. Watch what crap is. Who cares what happens when there's so much that crap is? Crap is. Crap is. Crap crap. Hello and welcome to Watch Your Crap Ins, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me today on the sunny shores of Martha's Vineyard is the one and only Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Well, hello. How are you? Oh, I'm great. You know, here we are. Uh, we yes. had just an amazing, uh, lovely weekend of touring the Midwest, St. Paul, Chicago, Columbus. Thanks to everyone who came out to those shows. They were all so much fun. Such a great time revisiting all those places. We only have two stops left on the Cheetah Brand Tour, and we're really excited about these final two stops. This Friday night, we are going back to the Wilbur in Boston, and we're going to recap Real Housewives of Orange County, which is really a super fun show to do live. It's just, like, hilarious. So, everyone, please come out and join us in Boston. In Boston. Um, And then on Saturday is the grand finale um, at the Foxwoods Casino. It's going to be a huge show. We got, like, tons of people coming to both shows, I should mention. But, you know, we've been doing the Cheetah Brand Tour. Okay, this is the Cheetah Brand Tour. And is there any better way to cap off the Cheetah Brand Tour than by recapping the Tom Foolery episode of Real Housewives of New York, season eight, episode 19, Tom Foolery. It, that is the It's About Tom episode because it is ultimately about Tom on Bravo at all times. So come celebrate the end of the tour with us at Foxwoods. Go to watchacrappens.com, get your tickets. And uh, of course, also we're here on video, beautiful video. Um, you can go to patreon.com slash watch for crap ends to uh, if you support us on the crap ends on demand level, then uh, you get access to these videos a week before everyone else gets them on YouTube. So go check that out. Plus we have our bonus episodes. Last week we did an airport snaps in Minnesota. And then this week we have an airport snaps in Chicago. And um, also, by the way, our Discord is fixed. People were having some issues connecting their Patreon to our Discord, and so that is all fixed. So if you're interested in joining the Discord community, go uh, go check it out. So that's all the fun, exciting stuff as we as we kick off this week. How are you doing, Ryan? It has been crazy. The traveling's been nuts. We did three shows this weekend. Um, so much fun meeting you guys, really. It is so nice meeting people just like us, you know, 
to be Bravo watchers is one thing, but to be like crap and style Bravo watchers is another. And uh, we are all the same. I realize, and mm-hmm. it's really nice to meet you all and see you all all over the place. Um, and we're just going to be sprinting. We've got a lot of new stuff coming next week because we're going to be off July 4th. Also, this week, we're not covering Atlanta. We did the Secrets Revealed episode as our Monday episode. And then we are, w- listen, between the two Sunday shows, we chose Summer House. Sorry. Yeah. It's just how it is. We like Summer House better, so we chose it. Um, Atlanta actually was a pretty good episode. It was good after uh, all. <laughs> it was a fun episode this week. So go watch it anyway. That will return to recaps next week. But can can't do it all. Also, what was the thing I was going to say? Oh, this morning I started taking notes because, like I said, we are going to be sprinting towards vacation time. We're going to have, we're going on vacation. There will still be episodes up while yeah. we're on vacation. So we're doing a lot of extra stuff uh, that week. So I'm taking notes really early for stuff in preparation. And today I started the Real Housewives of New York episode Tom Foolery season eight, episode 19 that we're doing in the Foxwoods Casino as our big grand finale. I took notes for an hour and 45 minutes and I got through 13 minutes of content. So if that tells you anything, mm. girl, get some rooms at Foxwoods or rooms. close by because it's gonna be long. It's gonna be a long finale. It, it is going to be a grand, grand finale at Foxwoods. It's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. I, I am so excited yeah. to revisit that episode. I um I was skimming through it this morning just to make sure it really was the episode that had the It's About Tom on it. And just even skimming through it, I was like, oh my God, this episode was so good. And also like, God, I miss I miss this cast so much. Still gonna be open-minded to the new New York cast, okay? Love me some Jenna What's-Her-Face. I want to say Jenna Elfman. Love Jenna Elfman, too. Oh, God. But thank Jenna... God she's not on it. Then I would really refuse fucking <laughs> Jenna Elfman. Get the hell Real out of here, Jenna of Elfman. Scientology. I'm still mad at her from fucking that stupid Dharma and Greg show she was on 80 years ago. Fuck <laughs> off, Jenna Elfman, all right? I... And guess what? I will always have the right to say that. Okay. Yeah, of course you do. Uh, we're going to start up a side podcast called Fuck Off Jenna Elfman. Although I have <laughs> nothing Fuck against Jenna personally. Elfman. I can't with you. And Greg, too, for enabling it. Well, Greg is actually the one who should be fucked off. He got fired from Criminal Minds because he basically was like, I, I don't know if it was Me Too or he was like verbally abusive, but he is actually the one who needs to get a fuck off. So, way to go, Greg. <laughs> yeah, fuck both of you. <laughs> if you thought yeah. you were out of the clear, guess what? Watch a crap is still coming for your ass, Greg. <laughs> Ready to get fired Dharma off a of CBS Greg. procedural, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> we're mad at Dharma and Greg still in 2023. But that's how we roll. Um, so what were you saying before I, I started know. screaming it about Jenna matter. Elfman? It was just something yeah, about the Jenna. New, the new New York cast, I'm not, I'm not going into it really... Like, oh, my God, I'm going to compare them to that. There's no comparison. There's I mean, New York, really, especially watching this classic episode, it's so ridiculous. It's so funny. All the different musical cues they had to come up with just to describe what was so ha- what was happening were so funny. Um, the people on it love them or hate them. You know, they are they are original and unique characters okay yeah. and i don't think that you can really replicate that i mean this episode has dorinda you know getting her lipstick on and being like you know a soundbar is a soundbar a soundbar is where you go to the bar and there's no cable and i'm gonna be what's a soundbar i need a table <laughs> that's ridiculous i'm not going to say you're gonna go to soundbar and confuse you Kate. <laughs> You're gonna confuse your kids, you can, bud. <laughs> I mean, it's so ridiculous. There's no recreating it. So, as far as the new one goes, you do you. I'm looking at it as a whole new thing. I'm not gonna expect it to be that because there is no that. That is that. Yeah. That being said, I will compare it and expect it to be that. Sorry, I just won't. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I am going to do that because I can't help it. Because if you take it away from me, I'm going to be like, why'd you take it away from me? And give me this instead. Okay. It's like whenever they re- when they like redesign a car, I was like, well, I like the way the old Toyota Camry looks. Why did you change it? Why did you have to do that to me? I'm not going to buy a new Toyota Camry. So um, I am going to be open minded to them, but I have to, like, it will take me a moment. It's going to take me a moment to adjust. But if they're really good out the gate, then you know what? Won't be a problem. I don't think they're going to be. Not, nothing's good out the gate. I mean, it's these are housewives. This is yeah. a Real Housewives show. This yeah. is going to take them a while. I'm giving them a Real Housewives of Miami season one. <laughs> yeah, they're going to need that. 
you know, leash where we found things to enjoy about it, but it was not great. Yeah. And then it got better later. I'm already giving New York that grace. I feel like it deserves it. You know, it's the greatest city in America. It does Arguably. deserve it. Like, you know, let, these shows always deserve that. And it was so funny that you mentioned Miami because on Watch What Happens Live, um, Andy Cohen was telling Bone Yang and Matt Rogers about the new New York. And he's like, guys, it's crazy. Like, you won't believe it. Like, my staff is already like five or six episodes in it. And they're obsessed. We can't tell you, but it's so good. So then I think it was Bo and Yang asked like, so tonally, or um, can you compare it to another show tonally? Uh, he's like, because we know you can't give us specifics, but totally, can you tell us? So Andy's like, um, uh, hey, control room, can you help me? Which is his way of saying, uh, control room, what's the <laughs> what's the show that people are really liking right now? So I could just say it's like that. So he's like, um, Miami, totally, it's like Miami, guys, it's like Miami. Of oh, right, right, because they have more than one minority on it. <laughs> that's what that's what that's what that means in Bravo. That's what that means in white host speak, Andy. <laughs> Okay. Well, we know he, what that means. He's trying to cash in on Miami. It, it, but by the way, by the way, what? How crazy is it that we're at a place on Bravo, where, in a way to to like sell people on a new show, people he Andy Cohen is comping it to Real Housewives of Miami, a former runt of the litter, and now it is actually the crown jewel on the entire network. Who would have thought? Well, that just goes to show you, you can't, we, we can't say what's the winner ever because it's never for long. Yeah. You know, we build you up, we tear you down. That's just how an audience is. So New York was the best for a very long time. And, uh, <laughs> you know, then it wasn't one bad for season. a while. And uh, Orange County was great for a while. It's not for a while. Jersey was great for a while. It's not for a while. Atlanta was, I mean, look at Atlanta. Atlanta was like number one for like literally yeah, over a decade. Hills. And... You know, now it's struggling. So who knows? So who knows? All it means is just give it about five more years, Dallas, and we'll be seeing you back on the airwaves. Never know. All right. So let's get on to Summer House Martha's Vineyard. We ended with everybody having a rosé brunch because this is Summer House and rosé is a very big part of a summer house. Yeah. So they're having their rosé brunch. Uh, Bria has just uh, gotten really pissed off with Shanice because Shanice was naked in the hot tub while her watch salesman boyfriend was around. And uh, now she's mad at not only Shanice for being naked, but she's mad at everybody for not yelling at Shanice for being ma- naked. Yeah. So Bria has decided to stay in bed and Shanice has come out on the balcony topless to be like, oh, hi guys, wait for me. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little bit of like a hey, fuck you. I feel like that she's doing like whatever. I'm going to yeah. be topless, you know? And so then Alex is like, whoa, what just happened, bro? And Jasmine's like, I have a problem with that. And so, and then Silas is like, what? Like, what? Like, it's just, what, what the, what the fuck? You know? And then he tells us, he's like, I was not involved in the titties last night because I was overseeing my wife ironing my pants and, Unfortunately, I did get distracted briefly, and she burned my pants. Um, bring that up later. But I'm going to keep bobbing and weaving with those titties. So Shanice is like, um, I've been through so much shit, you guys. And like on the weekends, I just want to have fun. And I'm not here to talk about my ex. I'm not here to like get in arguments with my best friend. I just want to have fun. And I'm not going to apologize for being me. Sorry. You just said sorry uh, in, in your <laughs> sentence about not apologizing and i know that you've been through a lot of stuff but you know you need to maybe stop calling people a hundred times after they dump you and like (laughs) hanging out in their bushes which is just a suggestion i don't even know what's true i do know that you dated somebody who is referred to as insecure actor i don't know what you were expecting (laughs) um so then we have uh simon is making a little plate for bria uh, of the food and Alex is drinking tonight because he remember in the season premiere he said he doesn't really drink because he likes to treat his body well that's why he's a vegan also but he's gonna drink tonight or, or this afternoon because it's actually brunch but I keep on thinking it's dinner and um, yeah so then Bria Bria's in bed and Simon brings her food and he's like just when the dinner started she goes out to the balcony and shows her titties and she's like ew gross stupid Shanice yeah in front of everybody showing her boobies her titties are out everybody is down there looking at them <laughs> like God, you fucking tattletale like do you get an extra used watch for every time you go up to fucking tattle if she doesn't come to dinner she doesn't get the information okay? yeah 
Now go downstairs and earn yourself another season, Simon. Fuck her. Well, it's a good way to um, to deflect off yourself because, like, Simon is also if if she need, I mean, if Bria's gonna yell at people, he she could also very easily yell at Simon for staying in the hot tub while she needs was topless. So it's his way of being like, remember, she's the bad one here. He should the more bad one here than me. I'm good little boy. You know, I think that this Puritan bullshit is enough. Like, I've had it. Okay, your Playboy models. Can we not even count on you? <laughs> Come on. I mean, this is America. It's ridiculous. Europe, they would be out there with their titties out all the time. Now, listen, I was raised kind of puritanical. I won't show my boobs. Okay, mm-hmm. it's not my choice. I don't even want to show my boobs. Okay, nobody gets to see mine. But I still support everybody else showing them. You're on fucking vacation. Get over it. And I'm not going to listen to some Playboy waitress get all pissed off about tits being shown. I know. Okay? And, then, and then Bria goes, when it happened to me, Everyone turned a blind eye. And now she's doing it in front of the husbands. How do you feel now? Karma's a bitch. I'm like, well, first of all, there's only one husband. Second of all, can we not do like the, you know, first they came for these people. And I said, <laughs> it wouldn't happen first to me. First they came for the, for the, what was I don't it? remember what I was like. Who's first that? they came for these people. And I said, it wouldn't happen to me. And then I came for these people. And I said, that wouldn't happen to me. And then I came for me and there was no one left. To say, I know I'm butchering that poem. It's like, I know. And it's actually, um, it's okay. First they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. <laughs> then they came for the trade unionist and I did not speak out. Because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for the boobies. <laughs> and there was no one left to speak for me. Oh, my goodness. That's what she's Thank doing. Thank you for that, <laughs> listening to that poem by my moobs. Okay. <laughs> She exposed her boobs. It's really more about, they didn't really come for the boobs. More like she exposed her boobs. First, she exposed her boobs to the socialists, and no one said a thing. And I didn't say a thing because I wasn't a socialist. Nobody said for the socialists. (laughs) Just a Holocaust poem. So, um, Silas. Ah, Just trying to win people over scene by scene. Scene by scene. (laughs) So, Silas uh, says, um, it's, I guess to the women, he's like, you guys look amazing, seriously. And Jordan's like, well, I guess some of us are looking thicker than others, because in case you forgot, last week, Alex just out of nowhere goes up to Jordan and goes, you're looking thick tonight. And she's yeah, like, okay, 30 thanks. minutes ago, 30 <laughs> minutes ago, you're looking thick. Thanks. And then uh, he goes, yeah, and I hope you enjoy getting thicker. And so they cheers. And then um, Shanice is just looking at herself in the mirror. So Simon comes back down and Bria tells us, um, I don't want to go to the rosé brunch today because I got mad at Shanice. And, you know, like we did squash it. And so we see three hours ago, (laughs) she had a conversation with Shanice. And she goes, "Um, you got naked in the hot tub with Simon. And Shanice goes, oh, yeah, you know me. And she's like, yeah, but it's different when there's other people's men involved and she's like okay well i apologize what happened to you not apologizing for being you (laughs) you can't apologize (laughs) and then tell us you're refusing to apologize that was an apology you owe nobody an apology let your boobs out and also but also let's let's also give it let's also give an and also to Bria, because Bria's not coming down because she's emotionally drained from the stupid thing that she got angry about. Like, you you emotionally drained yourself. I mean, it's brunch. It's a rosé brunch, and you're emotionally drained because you have to tell, tell Shanice, could you please not have your boobies out when my boyfriend's around? I mean, come on. Let's get over yourself. Bria needs constant attention. She does. Every single moment, she needs to be the center of attention, or she's going to be in the bed. I think she's more mad that Shanice got more attention than her. Now that she's is going to have exactly to stay in the bed. Right. She's one of those people. People. we've all got one in our lives and we just ignore them i'm friends with plenty of them. i am that person sometimes and you know just ignore me when i'm like that just you're like, literally never like that you get a lot of attention but you don't demand a lot of attention like that you get a lot of attention because oh, you've got darling, a great personality what are we getting married yeah oh, but you're not someone that's man. like oh if i'm not getting uh attention i'm just gonna like go over here to the corner you're just well thanks, that's more that's of a sweet. me move i would have to say to be honest no it is not but i think what <laughs> i'm really I do that all the time i'm like fine i think what i'm really relating to is just the being in bed 
Oh, I yeah. think like I just love being, you know, now that's true. I love to be in bed. And so feeling. I used to find reasons to be in bed like, oh, this hurt my feelings or that or I'm depressed about this. or I'm fat. Like I used to have all this stuff that would go through my head. And then one day I realized you can just go to bed if you want. Yeah. And then it was free. I was like, I was free once I realized that. Like, I don't have to be sad to go to bed. I don't have to be in bed and cry all day. If I want to stay in bed all fucking day and watch TV and eat Cheetos in my bed, I can do that because I'm a fucking adult. And I started doing that. And look at me. I'm a totally different person. And happy. Four wise women once sang, free your mind and the rest will follow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Simon, <laughs> Simon's back at the table and Alex is like, was it well received? He goes, yes. Did she say now get out? No. Like, okay. So Shanice joins the group and um, and Amir's like, oh, thank you, Shanice, for gracing us with your presence. And Alex goes, fully clothed. Ugh. Shut up, Alex. Alex yeah, tweeted at me. Who cares? Alex Get tweeted at me, and I feel like since this was a public tweet, I, I, you know, I don't normally like. I don't. I don't. When people DM me, I'm, I'm. I like to like honor the fact that it's a DM. This is a public tweet, and he's basically like, "I'm just sad you guys aren't seeing more of me because like." That you'd understand, like you get a fuller perspective of like where I'm coming from, and yada yada yada. I was like, okay, no, I don't get, I don't, I don't base my judgments on full um, views of people. I judge them on what I'm shown. Yeah, so sorry, take it up Learn with Bravo. To show that yourself me. better. I am just we are sitting here on a sofa <laughs> watching this. Am I supposed to sit here and watch and be like, wow, he's being sort of like a dick, but I bet like he's really like awesome and i've decided i'm just gonna like come yeah. up with a whole other thing i can't only go with what i see here it's bravo's yeah, fault no. sorry don't come for me and if you can't you can't if they can't pull an hour of footage together of you not being an asshole then that's on you okay yeah it's not they're not magic they can't just leave all of your good parts out that's just not how it works yeah so whatever. sorry sorry um, by the way he's fine by me i don't really mind him he's not much. an asshole I'm... but i just think that he's very fake at least as presented on the show um i just feel like he's like very fake and has like very fake energy and um i think he'd like to really present himself as being someone who is looking for deeper human connections while judging people on very superficial levels too yeah commercials here comes one right now Hey, it's Ronnie and Ben here, and you know we're best known for covering all things Bravo, from Real Housewives to Below Deck. And since we started the podcast, we've dissected a lot of shows that have featured hilarious, insane, and internet-breaking moments. You know a moment is iconic and has definitely broken the internet when people still use the GIF years later. I mean, Ronnie, what's your favorite Housewives GIF? I cannot resist sending the Teresa table flip. There's something just so pure and beautiful about her rage when she flipped that table. And that moment really put Housewives of Jersey on the map. I mean, that's still what everybody talks about. I think it's on her resume. <laughs> it is iconic. And speaking of flipping tables, I am seriously flipping out over the talent in Audible's new singing podcast competition series, Breakthrough. We've been listening to a few episodes now, and we're just completely blown away by all these five artists and their raw talent. Yeah, and it's like really cool. They all have different personal and musical backgrounds. Like there's country, there's Caribbean, there's Cuban, and their backgrounds just like they really shine through during these songwriting challenges. It's been incredible to witness them dig deep and push themselves to the next level because the coaches really aren't just there to say, like, you're good or, you know, that was pitchy. They're really trying to develop them and their voice into their own artistic creation. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's so true. So I personally am excited to see who's going to stand out in the next episode. And these competitors are not holding anything back. And we are both here for it. So check it out for yourself. Listen on Audible or wherever you get your podcasts. Go to audible.com slash crappens. That's audible.com slash crappens. Did you know that it can now take up to 11 weeks on average to hire for an open position? That is almost two and a half months. I mean, if you're hiring for your growing business, do you really have that time to wait? I don't. Well, if you're listening today, I've got some advice for you. Stop waiting and start using ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter can help you find qualified candidates for all of your roles fast. 
And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash crappens. How is ZipRecruiter so efficient at helping you hire? Well, ZipRecruiter uses powerful matching technology to quickly find and send you the most qualified people for your roles. Listen, you can check out the people that ZipRecruiter sends you, and if you really like one or two, you can personally invite them to apply with one click, which may make them apply even sooner. Speed up your hiring process with ZipRecruiter. See why 3.8 million businesses have come to ZipRecruiter for their hiring needs. Just go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash crappens. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash C-R-A-P-P-E-N-S. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Um, but my whole thing with all of this is like, oh my God, a woman showing her boobs around a man, but then the man can't control himself. And if something happens to the woman, it's because the, she did that around a man. You know, no, what? that's fucking bullshit. And learn how to control your men. If that's, if that's really a worry, like they can't be around a, a breast without getting a boner. Do you know how many penises I see? I see them all the time. I don't walk around with boners all the time. Is that really a thing? Like if a guy is around a booby, they're just like going to automatically cheat on you or do something horrible you need to find a better man guys literally can walk around without a shirt on and women can't without getting like a fine or a ticket okay so like you know what that's what i say about that um uh also uh alex just a few weeks ago was talking about how he was a real fuck boy and he did really terrible things to people and that's why he got into meditation or whatever it was um so apparently his past he's allowed to move past but when it comes to Shanice no that's just like what her past was and that she should be judged on it so but we're about to get into that so um anyway so he goes well here you are fully clothed thank you for that can I ask what that was about no (laughs) there's my answer when I walk around topless no you fucking can't shame shame master hey remember the thirst trap you took uh over there by the by the ocean that's what that boob moment was about okay because yeah. girls can do thirst trap things too but yeah remember when you were just like putting your legs back and like trying to like cornhole yourself for instagram <laughs> that's okay. the motivation right there yeah so shanice is like i thought it was funny <laughs> and he's like um so you thought so i thought it was like a fuck you is that what you were doing like it was a fuck you Yes, it was a fuck you to everybody who was tit shaming. Yes. And she's like, I just thought it was funny. Look, I'm here for vacation. Like, like this is party Shanice. Of course, of course it was funny. And so then we see in the truth booth, she's like, um, I don't think that anybody thought I was funny, but like, maybe they should lighten up a bit or maybe I should just go to like a nude fest, you know, like, do they have nude festivals in Martha's Vineyard? <laughs> maybe I should do that. Maybe I'm going to go to Europe. <laughs> And then she just flashes the camera. <laughs> oh, she's like, am I the drama? No, not me. I don't do that. I'm never the drama. I mean, now let's do the other side of the coin, though. I mean, she's not doing a great job at dispelling rumors that she's like a little cuckoo. So but I love it. This show needs it. Every show needs it. And, you know, I think part of it is just being older because I am. And so I look at people like Shanice. It's like, I didn't know when I was young and thin. I just didn't understand. I always yeah. thought I was old and fat. You know, <laughs> I was like, even when I was like 20, I'm like, oh, I'm so old. And um, just to see someone so young and free and pulling out their titties, I was like, I want to do that. I just want to go back just to do that. Just like lift off my shirt and just show everybody my boobs. Just be in the subway and just boob flash everybody, you know? Yeah, uh, I would do that. But then I'd have everyone in the subway being like, is that Abe Vigoda's body in front of me? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for me they'd be like oh my god uncle fester strips now get his number honey <laughs> i've had hey, a grandpa Pagoda. i don't have dad bod i have granddad bod and i've had it for years unfortunately i have grandma bod <laughs> so um jasmine uh jasmine's talking to shanice and she's like she's like um have you talked to alex yet about the whole thing about the googling and stuff and she's like no i just i want to have a fun day today i'll do it tomorrow and jasmine's like so like you're so you're not gonna do it. She said, "No, I will. I got it. Don't worry. I mean, I'm I'm gonna do it." Because Jasmine's like, "You you probably should. You got about five seconds." Yeah, but did you did you let him know you. that you want to talk to him? Because like you should at least let him know that you want to talk. Did you let him know that you were gonna plan on talking to him? Did you make an appointment to plan on talking to him? Because you really need to ma- shut the fuck up and mind your own business, Jasmine. <laughs> Jesus Christ, and learn how to use a tide stick while we're at it. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that being said, I mean, Jasmine is fulfilling her role as a reality star because when she sees that Janice is not going to make a scene for this rosé brunch, she's basically like, okay, I'm going to give you five seconds before I make this happen myself. Okay, you you, got, you can do it. So Shanice is like, I get judged pretty quickly because I feel like people are always judging me, but like, I just want to have, because I just want to have a good time. People judge me because of that. I'm like, yeah, because people who judge are the people who are having a terrible time. So they have to judge in order to find some sort of fun and whatever bad time they're already having. Trust me. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just wish I was there because if Jasmine ever turned to me and tried to shame me about everything, I would be like, oh, my God, hi, you burnt your breakfast sandwiches. So how about you worry about that? How about you not talk to me, breakfast sandwich burner? Yeah. Okay, yeah, enjoy your divorce. Guess what Guess what? that tide stick won't work on? Burnt cheese. So Preston's Remember like, when you tried to make a breakfast sandwich out of a tide stick? That was embarrassing. <laughs> so. So Preston is like, so do you feel like people aren't fair to you usually, uh, Shanice? And Shanice is like, yeah, she says the thing about being judged. And then Jasmine sort of opens it up to the table and goes, well, you know, like um, Alex and that whole Googling situation. I do wish that Alex would have just like, you know, called me and asked me about that instead. Everyone, <laughs> like you are, like you gave her. She literally just told you, "I'm going to talk about it with Alex tomorrow." Like she just said it, and now you've just forced it to the to the forefront. Yes, and why would he call you? Like, why is it your business? So know. Jordan's like, "Well, they haven't had a chance to have a conversation about that without other people, and I don't think that we should do that here, you guys." So Alex is like, "Wait, what did I do? I'm not the only one who saw it." And Shanice is like, "Um, you're the one who brought it up. I mean, it happened a year ago. It's done. It's like a year ago." And Preston goes, "You should have the right to move on from your past. You should." A year ago? I don't know how, like, a year ago is really considered your past. I mean, it yeah. is technically. It's technically your past. But I don't... I think you... I don't know. I think you at least need, like, a different haircut. <laughs> it's yeah. recent past. You know what I mean? So Alice goes, I'm calling bullshit on this conversation. Everyone here knows about it. And I feel like people are trying to make it seem like I'm the only one who saw it. It's like, it's not an issue that people know about it. It's the issue that, like... You found out about it, and then the next day you came down to breakfast and were like, Shanice, like, don't touch me, okay? Personal yeah, and you're like, and I, want, I don't like, want to be around that kind of person, you know? Yeah, like, you literally I'm were like, I don't want to be around you. Yeah, I'm related to a famous person, and famous people deserve respect. So, I stand for the insecure actor. Okay, mm -hmm. that's who I stand for. So it's just quiet. There's crickets. And Bria comes to the Bria is a, like sensing the drama, comes to the window to watch it. <laughs> and Alex is like, uh, I'm not the only one who talked about it. And they're like, yeah, but you brought it up. And Simon's like, uh, I need to go to the toilet. Bria, they are talking, Bria. Bria, come to the window. They're talking about that. Boobies and bushes. Now is the time when I go wee wee in the TT. So Jordan's like, well, um, you had specific questions about it, Alex, and you didn't give her the grace to ask her on her own. You made it another issue with all of us that we may have asked her on, or that, that we may have asked her on her own, and I lived that shit with her, so why are you doing it now? It's also confusing to me. If you couldn't give her the respect, like, are you going to let me finish? Because he's like, oh, But, but, oh, because, oh. because, are you gonna let John me finish? Legend, John Legend. Are you going to let John me finish? Legend. Okay, you know John what, you Legend. do this all the time, Alex. Chrissy okay, Seagan can you let me too. finish? Because Chrissy I was Seagan talking. Too. Okay, why didn't you just pull her aside? Why are you putting the spotlight on her right now? now in front of everyone because by you the way done? are you done oh my god that is the way to get cut off forever right yeah. there are you done are you done and she yeah. and she gives a perfect answer when she goes am i speaking <laughs> yeah, that's how you know when i'm done am i still talking no then you can go ahead okay yeah. and until then shut the fuck up okay? this guy who's all about like meditation hearing people out really understanding people it's like are you are you like are you done are you done no. Um, so, by the way, don't forget, she's still pissed, I think, uh, well, obviously, about being called thick. And she's also pissed by Alex coming up to her, like, right before that, also, or, like, earlier in that day, and saying, like, oh, by the way, um, Amir called dibs on you, so I haven't been able to talk to you because he called dibs on you. And so she's just like, fuck this guy. So Alex is like, he's telling us, what is Jordan talking about? Jasmine brought this up. Not me. I'm just like sweet Alex. 
And then we see 20 minutes ago, Alex in the whole Googling situation. And then Alex is like, yeah, Jasmine brought it up. I think it's fair that I have questions. I don't know Shanice. And Jordan's like, yeah, but you didn't ask her. And um, Jordan's like, yeah, they made it about Alex because he's the one who keeps bringing it up more than once. And Summer is saying, you know, basically they're like, Oh, Summer, the new girl, is like, yeah, I learned Alex Googled everybody. I don't like that. Mm -hmm. And the producer says, well, didn't you Google everybody? And she's like, no. I mean, I checked our Instagrams to see what they looked like, which is kind of Googling them. I, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Don't you have to Google them to find their Instagrams? That's Probably. That's only I know how to do it. Yeah. So then Jason says, he has valid points. And if you're going to Google someone, you owe them the right to say, this is what I found out. Let me find out from the horse's mouth. And Nick is like, I Google everybody. That's just being pragmatic. People are crazy. <laughs> yeah. And um, so Shanice is just like drinking from the rosé bottle. And, <laughs> and Alex is like, um, you guys are making me a scapegoat. And I had nothing to do with this. This is not my story. I was not the only one at this conversation. And so then we see in the kitchen everybody talking about it, basically. Because Silas is like, well, she doesn't want to talk about it. And Alex saying, well, but if she did talk about it, it could help her in the sense that it allows her to get her story out. And Preston's like, yes, talking about it could be a blessing. <laughs> um, this what's this implication that like Shanice needs to t talk about it so that way it could really help her. I don't does she need help? She seems pretty chill with it. She's pretty open about it on the show. She seems like has a pretty easy perspective and she takes ownership. She even said like, yeah, I did some of those things. So I think it's like, don't try to put this back onto Shanice. It's you. You're the one who has issues with it. And you're the one who's being real judgy about it. So don't make it be well, like, what cracks oh, me up about it is that it seems to me like this guy thinks because he's related to a famous person, he's famous. And so he's worried about somebody who stalked a famous person being there. <laughs> when he's not famous and he does mm -hmm. not have the right to worry about someone like you're just as normal as her you know what i mean right so nobody's hiding in your bushes so stop acting like you need you know the fucking president's team secret service or whatever to protect you okay because you know a famous person exactly so Please. um uh, yeah, he's like, he's like, I have a lot of compassion for Shanice, you know, as much as as much compassion as one could have for kind of a crazy person who touches your hand when you're talking, you know, and Jordan is trying to make me into the villain in this situation. And that's bullshit. I'm not the villain. That thick girl needs to shut up already. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, saying you have compassion for somebody who isn't in the hospital is a diss. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is condescending. <laughs> It's so rude. Like, unless they're like going, like someone just died or something like that. And you're like, I have compassion for them. They don't need your, she doesn't need your compassion. So he's like, um, I'm asking to excuse myself from the table right now. Cause this, I do not feel safe in this situation. <laughs> and I don't even know where this came from. Okay. So now for the rest of the episode, we're in, I don't feel safe and I'm triggered mode really with everybody. <laughs> we're he, entering the I'm safe and I'm triggered. I'm unsafe and triggered. When he said that, I knew you took whatever nearby straw wrapper you had and put, threw it into a ball and threw it at your at your at your screen. <laughs> no, but here's what I did do. I was sitting in the lobby of the hotel in Ohio, okay, which was like a big what was it like a hill? Oh my god! By the way, huge improvement over the Chicago hotel since people were asking about that. Oh, the Hyatt Regency, the Hyatt Regency in Columbus oh, yes. was amazing. Love that hotel. Gorgeous. It was gorgeous. And Ben, I publicly apologize again for putting you through the Chicago <laughs> that, mess. That the, was horrible. But the Hyatt Regency was so great. Like it just it just it erased much that better. that horrific Chicago thing out of oh my god, I loved that hotel. Yeah, it was great. But I was taking notes in the lobby and um I let out an audible, oh fuck off. <laughs> and uh, people looked at me. So <laughs> That is what happened. So um, he's like, they're trying to make me the villain. So I'm going to leave because I don't feel safe. Because, um, <laughs> you know, there's someone hiding behind the bush. It's Shanice. So violins and he gets up and leaves. And he does the worst. He does like the typical hack season one walk off where he doesn't really walk off. Yeah. He just walks away and then a camera crew doesn't follow him. So he comes right back. <laughs> I know. It's classic. <laughs> how just... many ways do we need to tell you you're not famous okay even the camera crew of your own show won't follow you 
I, it always makes me think of when I was a kid. I just remember one time having a specific argument with my brother about something stupid. I don't even remember what the argument was about, but I was in his room and I got so mad. So I was like, I'm going to storm out. And I stormed out and I went to slam the door, but I like sort of didn't do it right. So the sort of door sort of like lightly bounced, like lightly closed, then sort of bounced open a little bit. And so I walked back in. And I was like, I'm doing that again. I slammed the door. I was like, ha, just an That's awkward, funny. awkward statement moment. One time I was dating this guy and we got in a fight in the car and I was like, that is it. And I got out of the car because he was dropping me off at home and I, I was like, fuck you. And I slammed the door and then he drove off and I was like, how dare he drive off? So I got in my car and I just like slammed the gas all the way to his house and then I banged on the door and he was like, yes. And I was like, how dare you let me leave the car? <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, you told me you didn't want want to talk to me i was like that's when you chased me in like what do i have to do everything around here and then he went into the bed i did and said i stayed over said <laughs> <laughs> you're emotionally drained so um so yeah so alex does this thing and shanice is like um why are you trying to be the victim now i'm not here for that i was like oh my god she's speaking ronnie's language so yes. uh, i was like when she said that too i then imagine you being like yes yes and i love shanice i fucking love shanice yeah uh so then uh nick goes i hate this shit and we get a commercial break and a boom and then when we come back there's like violins and Shanice is like um I don't really want to bring this up right now I was gonna bring it up tomorrow morning and Silas is like well what I don't want is that Alex brought this up and then he took away Shanice's ability to talk about it your wife did that your wife did that sir yeah and Jordan's like well why don't we talk about Shanice's feelings it's her story to tell and Nick says yeah that's all I'm saying and so they're all saying, basically, we only know this because Alex is the one who brought it up. So if he's mad about it, too bad. It's right. his fault for bringing it up. Yeah. So then Jason's like, well, I feel like people that, that, you know, people think they're being villainized when they make a flaw. And this happens to this. Does, this moment doesn't make me look at him and think he's a fucked up person, uh, which is true, too, by the way. That's actually such a good observation that, like, if someone has, like, a flawed moment, people, people are, I, I wonder if this is a product of a people's awareness of reality TV, that the moment that you're flawed, you just know you're going to be edited in a way that you'll be a villain. So people on these shows are extra sensitive to it. And they, you know, Alex storms off and basically Jason's like, it was just like a flawed moment. And now you're like freaking out and storm away from the table. It's ridiculous. Right. And, and he doesn't, he comes right back. <laughs> yeah. So he's back. So Jason's like, uh, I'm glad you're all right, Alex. Cause I don't villainize you, but it's like, oh, he could have handled that different. And Alex goes, but I could have handled what different? What did I do wrong? And there's a really long silence. Because it's like, babe, you're all about introspection. And you walked off to like gather your thoughts. And you still don't have any? You still like, have you no can't gather your thoughts if you don't have any. You know what I mean? <laughs> Think. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Just like think, yeah, think, think. Get one of those bars. Just think. So Amir has to explain, right? So he's like, she said, "Don't do it here." She said she's going to do it tomorrow, and then that pushed him to ask the question that no one wanted. Okay, and it was it happened here. And Shanice is like, "Oh, like, just correct me if I'm wrong." Didn't? Oh wait, Jasmine. this is Jasmine. I think you said this. She said, uh, "Please correct me if I'm wrong, but Alex needed clarity in this moment." You brought it up. You started a fight yeah. at the table so Silas would stop concentrating on how he probably married the wrong person because you burnt the cheese on his bun and misused the side stick. Yeah, exactly. So um, uh, Alex is like, well, my name got brought up, so I thought it was the best time to bring it up. And Shanice is like, well, I'm a completely changed person from where I was a year ago. I mean, you know, now I bring a little cot when I sleep in the bushes. It's really lovely, in fact. And that happened. I was 28 now, and now I'm at the wise old <laughs> age of 29. I know so much things, so many things about the world now. <laughs> I love that 28 is like a babe in the woods, but 29. She knows whoa. things. She knows things <laughs> now that she didn't know before. So Alex is like, I hear you. It's just what made me feel bad is that I'm suddenly a bad guy. What made you feel bad is that you got called out for a thing that you did. Sir, that that's what it made you pierce the image, uh, this this image that you've created of yourself, and that's what you are upset about. That you've worked very hard to create this image of you being this introspective, deep person, and that someone punched a hole through that. 
So she's, she's just, basically giving us the old Shannon Bedore. How dare you accuse me of something I did? <laughs> so Shanice is, like, Shanice is like, I mean, if you'd asked me straight up, I would have been a hundred. And Alex is like, well, I don't, I don't feel any kind of way. So then they like are fine. They like they squash it and everything, and they make cheers to tranquility and peace and forgiveness and love and to thickness. <laughs> <laughs> so they clean up their brunch and then uh, it's pool time and, you know everybody's just kind of doing vacation-y things Amir's at yeah. the pool oh no he's actually uh, no, playing, he's playing pool. pool he's playing pool summer and he's like this is how I picked I up girls in college this in two-stepping no sir you picked up in girl you picked up girls in college by being extremely good looking and humongously worked out. And, okay, so whatever you're yeah. telling yourself about your pool skills or your dance skills is bullshit. You're hot as fuck. Okay, you're, you're hot as fuck, and you like cook shirtless, and you move ladders around for no good reason. So, like, that's what it was. So, and you um, say things like, "Do you consent?" before you lap dance, people. Okay, <laughs> you're just doing the right. Th- you were born with it. And you're you're perfecting what you were born with. So let's not fool ourselves with our pool skills. Okay. <laughs> so please don't allow yourself to have pool skills. Okay. We're like we're not like we're, yeah, just, just, we're, we're like not willing to allow this person to have like another trait. <laughs> we're like your traits he, are done. He, you like he went can to have school. it. I mean, you can have it. Just don't kid yourself into thinking anybody wanted to fuck you because you're good at pool because yeah, that well, literally never happens. That is you know the, I mean? that is the truth. I can't think of. That is, I think, a male fantasy right there. That women are turned on by men who play pool. I mean, that like every yeah. movie that's like directed by a man, there's like a scene where a guy's playing pool and a woman's like, "Wow, big shot! You really knew how to put that in the pocket." And then the girl comes up and then she does it really well, and then they like make out. I don't think any girl is really like that because have you have you have you seen have you seen pool cha- pool championships? Have you seen the kooky ladies who play pool professionally? <laughs> that's that's the kind of kooky lady. And I'm not saying they're not interested in men. I'm just saying like. I feel like the idea. I'm gonna get myself into so much trouble, but I feel like the idea of like the kooky lady, really? like the, like the the sexy, the sexy vampy lady who's like, yeah, let's play pool, like Susan think, Sarandon, yeah, okay. like Susan Sarandon. And then when you see, they all look like Nora Dunn in like a in like a, a bejeweled vest, you know. Well, I don't think the guys who are playing pool are trying to pick up the girls who play pool. They're <laughs> trying to pick up just the girls at the bar because they think everyone's just watching their their pool game, you know. Like in I, a pool hall, the guys are like, yeah, bro, I'm going to play pool, and then like strut around. Nobody's watching. Nobody cares. You know what I mean? I just want to apologize to uh, women in general that I just did this massive generalization women about women and pool and women pool players. It was just totally off base, and I just went down a hole and couldn't get out of it. I but that like being every, said, I feel like everyone's going to be okay. Okay, everyone's going to get by it. But that being said, I do ultimately agree with the original thesis, which is that I don't think that there are as many women get turned on by men playing pool as men. People think don't there get are. turned on by pool. It's not a turn onable. I hate game, pool. Okay? Can I say that? I hate pool. I think it's the most annoying. Like, I think it's worse than than cornhole. And you know, I don't like cornhole. I hate pool. Yeah, I'm it's, just not good at it. So I it's hate just not interesting. Not like it's just not yeah. interesting to me. Come on. Here comes one right now. I'm going to say something scandalous, Ronnie. Go on. Plants are meat. And not only are they meat, they're delicious, especially if they're from Impossible Foods. They taste like beef. Exactly. Impossible is making meat history this summer. Yeah, they are. Summer of Impossible. I am so excited to be spending time cooking my summer foods, all that good stuff. And guess what? We can use Impossible sausages, Impossible brats. I mean, it's going to be a great summer for Impossible Foods. Impossible beef is made from plants and 19 grams of protein per serving. And it's better for the planet. And it's meat. Plant meat. Correct. So if you're looking for something to grab for your grill, grab some Impossible beef. Summer of impossible start making meat history today just head over to the meat aisle at your local grocery store grab some impossible beef or patties and get grilling so um uh, he's like showing trying to show someone the two-step and shanice is like oh my god you know what this would be better with music so they turn some on and then she falls on the ground she's like oh my god i'm so funny and they just leave her there (laughs) uh so she pulls out some binoculars and just starts looking around the room yeah. Uh, so then Bria is still in bed, and Simon comes in. I love that someone's filling the page role 
on yeah. this show. I mean, they're like, it's Summer House. We need someone constantly in bed. And Brie is doing it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, good for her. Yeah, and Simon's like, everything was fine, except they asked Alex about Shanice and, like, about what? He make research about her, <laughs> which I love. I love his, like, uh, Google Translate version of, like, of like, hey, he looked her up. He's like, he make research about her. And so Rhea's like, oh, yeah, I saw that he got up and left. Yeah, but then he was back because he did ma- he made research about other things and came back to give results about making research. So Bria finally comes down and people are hanging out in the living room. And, um... Alex is like, uh, so there's a rumor that Jordan and Preston have been sleeping together. That doesn't line up with your celibacy thing, Preston. And Preston's like, do not question my celibacy, sir. And Alex is laughing because he's just kidding, you know? Oh, no, I think... It, it is. Yeah, it's, it's he's a just joke kidding. Because like, uh, Jazz... I mean, not Jasmine. Uh, Jordan is, like, leaning her head on Preston's chest because she's like, I want to go to sleep or something. There's, so he's making a joke about like oh i heard that you two are sleeping together so much for your celibacy and jordan's like she's had enough she doesn't even want to hear a joke she's like you know what alex i don't come for your veganism for your soberdom and i haven't fucked anyone all last year and you've been drinking all summer she's basically like you have your things i have my things and at least i hold on to my things but for some reason you come for me even though you can't even hold on to your bullshit things and he's like, what? Now you're making stuff up. And she's like, I'm making stuff up and you're accusing me of sleeping with people. Now she's way too upset about Alex, <laughs> but Alex has just been poking at her and poking yeah. at her and poking at her. And I think she's just now officially done. In a way where so, like, it's almost like he pokes at her in a way where it's like, if you're not laughing along with us, you're crazy. So she's like... I. I think we all agree that Alex was not saying that she was really sleeping with Preston or anything like that. But like you said, she's just like done. She's just done with the prodding and and she's just sick of it. So he's like, so I've had a couple of drinks over this summer. And she goes, well, I didn't have a couple of dicks over the summer, <laughs> which is funny, but it's also like, what, why, why now? And why this? <laughs> so he's like, well, you know, I'm just messing with you. And she's like, I know, but I don't come after you or anything. And I don't like that my shit is played as a joke and your shit isn't. And I'm tired of you playing me like I'm a sexual creature out here when I haven't been a sexual creature. And you have sexualized me more than once. We get a boom. And then we get the, and then we see the clips, the greatest hits. Yeah, and so we see Alex and Jordan at tennis. We goes, "You're not playing sexy enough." And then we see Alex earlier. We goes, you, "Jordan, you're looking thick." And then Alex uh, earlier in the season saying, "Hey, do you know how to insert a?" Huh, I'll stop. Yeah. And she's like, and um, don't look at Amir because I'm looking at you. And Amir's like, "Uh, I just walked in. So I don't really know what's going on here. I heard there was a ladder in here and uh, (laughs) maybe some women who are interested in watching me play pool. I don't know. So she's like, I wasn't playing about celibacy. I went through so much. And even though I've done stuff like pose nude, I never was a sexual being. And I don't appreciate that you've done to me this a million times at this point. And he's, Amir's like, well, I don't think. And she goes, oh, I know what you don't think. Because you've done it to me, too. And he's like, <gasps> he's like, what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And Alex, what would you say to me earlier? Go ahead and say it. And he's like, well, I said that Amir stated his intentions clearly. And that his intentions were that he liked you. And she goes, oh, so that meant you could get to know me in a certain way. And uh, 11 days ago, we see the Amir clip going, if we're doing the whole bros first, I like Jordan. Right, and so then Jordan's like, I felt like you you pissed on the tree and the tree was me and I didn't get an opportunity to say how I felt. You know, basically, basically she's saying like, you guys are like, Essentially, you're not going off of the vibe, like my vibes, you know, you can like where you can see who I'm interested in. You just guys just chose and you're battling it over without even seeing that I'm not into either of you schmucks. Right. So Amir's like, the only thing that I said is that I'm interested in said person and I'm really, really good at pool. So if anyone wants to watch, you know, just be prepared. And uh, Jordan's like, well, personally, I am exhausted by being sexualized and called a party girl. And I'm tired of being labeled in this home by the men and not having any say. And she's crying. And, and she's and like, by the way, don't forget I that still Sil- end up in the middle of this bullshit. 
And don't forget that Silas, also at the beginning of the season, this all probably stemmed as well from Silas being like, I don't trust my wife with you when you guys go out. Like, so she, he's painted her as like this bad influence, sexual influence. So like this has been brewing all season long. Yes. So she's like, well, no one seems to give a fuck about who I am and I'm tired of it. And I just wish somebody would give me the same respect I give everyone else. And everyone's just kind of looking at her like, what the hell? And Silas is laughing, of course, because he's Silas. Right. And she's like, nobody asked me about if they're, if they're attracted or supportive, but somehow I end up with nobody on my side. And Nick's like, yeah, but we've had good conversations and it's not as contentious as all this. Like we talk about where you're from and your family and fashion and it's not contentious. And Amir is pissed, right? Yeah. So he just like storms off to the kitchen <laughs> and she's like, but I feel shitty. I'm more than that. And Bria basically explains, I think Bria's take on this is perfect. She's like, I mean, if you type in Jordan Emmanuel into Google, you're going to see naked. You're going to see naked pictures. So, of course, people see that and they're going to sexualize you. But she's not really like that. She's more than just nude pictures, you know. And I think it goes back to, like, Jordan in the beginning being like, sorry, I'm hot, but there's more to me than being hot. You know, and at first that was an annoying thing to hear. But then it's like, yeah, I mean, you are a Playboy model. You're gorgeous. And you actually work for Playboy. And I think that that automatically, it puts you in a position where people think that they have a right to, I don't know. It's like Put being a, a jelly bucket. belly. It's like being a jelly belly in a bin in a candy store. People just hmm. ha think that they have a right to, like, open the door and, like, eat you. I you had know? A, And it's like, you know, I'm not, I, I no. You know, it's when not. this episode started, I was like, I have a feeling Ronnie's going to compare Jordan to a jelly belly at some point. <laughs> um, no, I mean, it's interesting because there's like an aspect we like to think in our like and, and you know, I like to, you know, I, I like to view myself as someone who's super progressive while I at the same time trade in strange stereotypes about female pool players. But I like to think of myself as progressive. So when Jordan's um, when Bria says things like, you know, she's in she's in Playboy and she's naked. So, yeah, people are going to sexualize you like, you know, I like to think that, you know, we aspire to, you know, to to think in ways where it's like just because someone poses naked that they're going to you know like 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 oh it's like their fault that they're sexualized because they chose to 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 pose naked that we're trying to move away from that kind of thinking but at the same time there is a certain reality to what Bria is saying and so it's very frustrating I'm sure for Jordan because she wants to express herself in one way but then the consequences of it have been that people view her only in 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 very sexualized and people don't pay attention to her brains or her personality and she's sitting here in this house where guys are not don't care about what her attentions are with any of them they're still just trying to like call dibs on her like a trophy and you have silas calling her like this evil influence and she's just like fuck all of you i don't know what i'm trying to say i think i'm just repeating things i thought so it was clear no i thought it was clear and i think you're right you know i'm just saying you know you put yourself I think that people uh, the people assume that they have a right to you because you put yourself out in this uh, like way. Like she had it coming, right? I think that guys act like that, yeah. Like if they see, like one time, okay, here's, this is, I mean, I think what I'm saying is pretty clear, but just in case people are not. I used to live by this bar called Foo Bar, okay, this gay bar. And it was real dirty and like seedy, but I loved this Truly. place. It was a great bar. Great bar. Miss you, Foo Bar. Yeah. And um, I would go there with my friends all the time. And there was this bartender there. And you know, they're hot. All the bartenders are really hot. And they're always shirtless and stuff. So one time I saw the bartender at Whole Foods in line. And I was like, oh, hey. And he looked so mortified that I was saying hi to him. And mm -hmm. I was like, it's Ronnie from Foo Bar. And he's like, hi, how are you? And I was like, good, how's it going? What are you up to? And he's like, well, I'm actually getting ready to go to class. And I was like, oh, badass, what's that for? He looked so shocked to be having a conversation with somebody that wasn't like gross. Or I don't know if he expected me to be like touching him, which I never was. I mean, he was a bartender, but I just remember feeling like this guy is so shocked that somebody is like asking him about himself or like having a real conversation. And every time I saw him after that at the Whole Foods, he was so nice. Wow. And I was like, hi, Ronnie, how are you? 
And I was like, that's so sad because he's probably getting like totally sexualized every time the guy moves just because he's some bartender at a gay bar with his shirt off, you know? And I feel that that's kind of how Jordan is. It's like, just because I've been in Playboy, just because you can Google me and see my pictures doesn't mean I'm all about being your dream woman and fucking you. You know, right. I've got other things going on. So it feels like she's kind of overreacting right now to me as a viewer. But then I think of all that stuff and I'm like, oh, okay. yeah, because it like feels it. it does feel like an outsized reaction. But the truth is, it's a reaction to an entire summer's worth of microaggressions. And she's just fed up. She's also drunk, by the way. I think she's she's drunk, too. But that doesn't take away from the fact that um, she has been dealing with microaggressions from guys who are just sort of like act, acting like she's a toy and it's just gonna be like who gets the, who gets the toy when the toy has declared many times i'm not a toy and i've chosen i have elected not to be played with for a year so you will never get to play with me I, in fact i'm i'm an electrical outlet so stop trying to play with me <laughs> you know like you should not be playing with me i've i have a warning in, attached to me you should know but um you know so she's frustrated so alex is like Jordan's like crying in Jasmine's arms and everything. And Alex is, she's crying in Jordan's arms. And Alex comes over and he's like, I just want you to know that we all see you and it's all love. And you know what? I'm joking. I'm just trying to show love. Sorry if I'm wrong. And then he like adds on, he adds on to the hug. And I'm like, Alex, this, you do, you do not get to be, you do not get to participate in this hug right now. So now Amir is really upset. So he's calling his friend in night cam. And he's like, I just got ripped up in front of the entire house because I expressed my interest in somebody. And all I said is that I want to see her more. And now I'm getting dragged in front of everyone. And I just had to take it. And I just walked away. And uh, this is why I love straight guy friendships. Because his friend is like, oh, yeah? Oh, well, fuck them, bro. Like... <laughs> <laughs> just like take a deep breath like don't let shit get to you and Amir's like thank you and he goes alright well take care uh, like, thanks man thanks <laughs> so Amir's like I've come to an understanding that I don't really have a chance with Jordan I was like really was that because of tonight or because she said also several times like I'm celibate. I'm not interested. So she's like, you know, you feel like the stars are aligning and you feel like you're making momentum. And then you hear that. And it's like, yeah, like it makes you feel like, am I good enough? How many ladders do I have to move around a house before I make a girl attracted to me? Oh, for fuck's sake. So everyone wanders around. Uh, Nick and Summer are playing pool now. She's really good. And, um, Amir's like, wow. So Jordan brought that up. And Nick's like, yeah, I think it was uh, cathartic for her. And Amir's like, oh, good, 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 yeah. good, good, good. I'm gonna do two quit goods and uh, stare <laughs> off into space, really pissed off, like. Yeah, I hope that that comes I'm totally across. not hurt. I'm good, good. not bruised at all. And I was like, you know, sometimes people just need to purge, and it's the person standing next to them who gets it. And I was trying to keep it light and funny, dog, but I really was. But I guess what's funny for one is a trigger for another. No, uh, so I, deep. you know, here's my thing with Amir. I don't know that Amir has over sexualized anybody. I'm not going to accuse him of that. I don't think he has. But he, uh, she hates water. She told you she hates water. And you've now tried to get her to go into water twice. So yeah. you're, auto you're automatically like not. You're just being an asshole. You know what I mean? Like you're automatically just showing her, no, do it my way. You'll like it. And nobody's attracted to that. Do so if you fix anything, fix that. Don't put people in lake water who don't want to be in lake water. It's like me telling Ben, Ben, guess what? We're going to go kayaking today. He would not. He would hate me because I know that he hates it. lake water. He finds it disgusting. I would, I would not make him do that. I might be okay with kayaking because I'm not in the water necessarily. But if you tip over the kayak, then I'll be mad at you. But, um, mm. uh, you know, I also wonder, Jordan seems like extremely sharp like a very, very smart person. And she also, as she goes on these stupid activities, kayaking that she doesn't want to do, walking along the beach, the things that like Amir keeps dragging her to do, she is probably savvy enough to know, oh, the producers are probably trying to create a story out of me liking Amir and I'm not interested and I'm sick of them trying to create, trying to push this. So I would not be surprised if, if that's fueling some of her frustrations. That's my conspiratorial um, perspective on this that I just came up with but like I feel like 
I feel like she would get frustrated with that if she sensed that that was what was going on. Yeah. So then Amir goes to paddle on the couch and Silas is like, okay, well, look, here's another perspective because he's talking to Jordan, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, uh, a guy really likes you and he's never objectified you. And then Amir pipes up because he hears it. And he's like, and he hears you and understands where you're coming from. And wasn't it, hit, you know, he you knows you wanted... weren't directly coming towards him with it in that moment and that oh, you just wanted you. to be you listened wanted and to be heard, listened to. theoretical. Mm -hmm. I'm just a boy standing in front of a girl asking her to kayak with him. And she's like, but then why did you walk away? <laughs> and he's like, because I didn't know that you wanted to even be in the same room as me. And he's like, I've never once come at you and objectified you. Okay, and she's like, well, maybe not directly and maybe not purposely, but I'm the brunt of it, whether you meant it or not. So, you know, you staying there and listening would have meant a lot. I'm a, I just wrote, oh, Lord. <laughs> he goes, well, I'm sorry, because at the end of the day, I want nothing to do for, but to protect you. Not saying I'm objectifying you. I'm just going to infantilize you. I just want to protect you. I'm like, what are you protecting her from? <laughs> you're actually endangering her you're taking her out in a kayak at Martha's Vineyard there's great white sharks out there by the way great white sharks are swimming all around Massachusetts you are you're making her life more dangerous so they hug and make up and um she then Jasmine and like Silas yeah she's like whatever <laughs> um but it's also awkward for her too because she's like doing this whole like I don't want to be sexualized thing I don't want to be sexualized but she's on Summer House and Jasmine's running around trying to get everybody to hook up constantly, yeah. you know, which is, I know she also had a problem with Jasmine earlier in the season, like leaving the fuck alone. Like stop trying to make me marry somebody just because you are, but it's like a whole situation that's <laughs> just sucks for her. You know, it's like, Oh my God, why am I being so sexualized on summer house? Uh, so then um, Jasmine and Silas are talking and Jasmine's like, I mean, I might be insecure because we were talking about Jordan and the structure of the house, and I was just jealous that I couldn't bring the house together like that. You know, <laughs> the house came together, but it wasn't me. Like, you know what? You should have worn that straw hat. I think Shoot it was the straw, straw hat. hat. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's crazy how the house just doesn't rally around you when you say that. You know, being in a married couple is hard because people just don't listen to what you say with the same gravitas. God, that's such a universal feeling that everyone understands. So, she's so annoying because she started the fight and then she's mad that she couldn't fix the fight. Maybe people are starting to see that you're starting the fights just so that you can say you <laughs> solved them later. She goes, oh, Silas, just hold my boobs and let's cuddle. <laughs> so um, people go to sleep and everything and now it's the next day and um, uh, Milo is watching Bria brush her teeth in that stupid mile away, like Milo's just looking. And then uh, and then Simon's actually mad. Simon's like, Milo, stop it. I'm here, okay? Come do research with me, okay? We do research on things, on the internet. And, okay, all of this. First of all, I have way too much to say about a scene that lasted two seconds, so I'm warning you. Yeah. First go. of all, Milo's doing that because he's standing on the edge of the bed kind of going, oh, because she gets up and she's brushing her teeth and doing all this stuff before she takes him out and feeds him, okay? That's... The morning when you get shit. up, the dog has been waiting for you all night, okay? And mm -hmm. now you're taking care of yourself first. I have a question. And then Simon is in bed fixing a watch. Who does that? <laughs> I mean, what kind of life is this? He's in bed just like fixing a watch. Like, it's like Geppetto over there. <laughs> what kind of old timey pioneer town shit is this? <laughs> I have a question, Ronnie. One thing that happens, I've noticed in the past several episodes in this episode, is that sometimes in the cutaway shots, when Bria has like a like a little movable pen for Milo. She puts Milo in this thing and then she drags it around the house. What is that and why is that? It's because they don't want Milo running all over the house all the time and she doesn't want him begging while they're eating. So while they're eating, she puts him in a little pen instead of just leaving him in the fucking room. The dog does not need to be around you 24 hours a day, okay? Dogs are... Yeah. Okay, being left alone. Sometimes. People leave your dogs alone. Okay, so I have two friends. Uh, they're great. I love my friends. They have an enormous dog. They have an enormous dog that always has a wet snout and everything, and it's loud. And they went to like the to, the the mall the other day, and they're like walking through like Bloomingdale's or Macy's with this dog. 
Why? Why does this dog have to come to the mall? <laughs> Why does it have to go into a department store? People, leave your know. dogs at home. I say this I to my know. friends. I say this to my enemies. It's a universal thing. Dogs don't have to go to every single space that you go to. Yeah, not everyone. And Z- Bueller is just too big. Like, I can't carry him. If he was more of a purse dog, I would probably take him around more. But uh, when I had Xena, she was a little Jack Russell. And she was a little Jack Russell. She was the runt of her litter. And I used to take her to more places. But, yeah, at this point, I'm just like, you know, I mean, if I'm not gone, if I'm not gone for, like, 14 hours, I'm like, chill. You'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, the dogs will be fine. Dogs will be fine. They're resilient. So, um, but she's just also doing that thing where her dog is her personality. She's like, I'm a model with a dog. (laughs) (laughs) Like that's, she's like being one of those people. So she's like, I'm just always going to have my dog because that's what we do. Yeah. So anyway, so well, uh, Silas and Jasmine are in their room and he's like, these pants, do you see this? Do you see these pants? And she goes, uh, listen, somebody has a G pen. I already asked. So, and she got Silas says, baby, how did this stain happen? She goes, oh, well, it's from the iron. Like, I still need to get the tie to go pen, um, which they have. Someone has it. So, like, that's what happened. I was ironing and it marked the pants. And he's like, babe, but these are my pants. And he goes, I tried telling you these shirts and pants don't need ironing. And then you ironed the pants. And she goes, okay, so you don't want to iron those? Is that what you're saying? And he goes, yeah, but now we have to iron the shirt because there's this huge stain on the pants. And now we have to iron the, you, you iron the pants. And now, now it's match the shirts. Now we have to iron the shirt. And when you put the Tide Go pen on them, you have to iron them. So you have to iron that now. So now you have, now you have to Tide to Go things you have, and you have to iron things. What? Wait. How dare you? Sir, how fucking dare you? And Jasmine says, how about this? I'm going to leave you to that. No, how about this? I'm going to leave you, period. Throw the iron at the face. What the fuck are you doing? And how much self-confidence do you actually have in yourself that you're going to put up with this shit? If he's talking to you this way with a whole camera crew around you, how is he talking to you in private? I'm, I don't like you. I think you're an asshole. I think you're a controlling person. I don't think you're very nice. Okay, and I don't know why anybody's friends with you, frankly. But spoiled. You're. I want better for you than this. You deserve a lot better than this. This guy's a total controlling asshole. And if he's not abusive yet, he probably will be at some point. Run. Yeah, this is Run. crazy. I mean, also by the way, if you st- if you have a stain in your pants, you don't iron it because there's a stain. I think that's actually works for it. So I don't even know what he's talking about with that. But yeah, this the amount of entitlement with this. Like you should be so lucky that you have someone who is willing to iron something for you. And they got the fact that they got a stain on it, like you're going to actually complain in a way of like, well, like, you know, you, you ruined it because you were ironing it. Uh, and then she says, well, you do it yourself. I mean, it's just, it's so obnoxious, this behavior. And this is on top of the fact that he complained about the fact that she burned the cheese. Like the fact that that like stuck with him all day long. And that then he had to bring it up at guys night to be like, yeah, man, like she made me breakfast this morning and then she burned the cheese. It's like, oh, get over yourself, you fucking asshole. There are some things that are fixable in people. This is not one. No. This is something that's deeply ingrained in him. I don't know where he learned it. I don't. I guess he was raised like that. Maybe there are people who like living like that still in 2023, where the woman does this, the man does that, and the man is allowed to yell at the woman for burning his breakfast sandwich. Whoever those people are, you can go fuck yourself, because that's some bullshit, and this is 2023. And... She's an idiot for putting up with this at this point. This guy is fucking terrible. Get some self-respect and run. He's not going to change. He's only going to get worse. And the more you take it, the more you enable it for the next person. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Jasmine says that that feels like they're in a pattern and they're just like not slowing down enough to check in with each other and like just trying to get through the vacation. But their arguments are like triple. (laughs) It's not slowing down. You're in Martha's Vineyard. What are you doing? You're not like... (laughs) He not- checked. He's checking in with you, and he's checking in with you enough to tell you you're doing everything as his maid incorrectly. Yeah, run. It's better to have a job, and you can't okay. take shots. Yeah, terrible from free shots. So now Preston's on the phone. He's FaceTiming his partner Donald, and they've been together for like two and a half years. And tonight he's going to be doing a soulful, so soul food, soulful soul food Sunday. And so he's going to make mac and cheese, collard greens, and then afterwards there's going to be a pride party. So there's that. You're making people eat all those carbs on gay pride. <laughs> I've never heard of this kind of gay. 
I've literally never heard of a gay who's like, oh my God, it's gay pride. Let's eat mac and cheese. Well, bef- well so while they're before they're you're drunk. a unicorn at 2 a.m. That's when that's when all the gays then stream yes. into the fast food yes. and the carbs. If you had pride first and then you had soulful Sunday or whatever, then it works. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Then it works. But this way, I don't know you right now. So then uh, the girls are checking in on Jordan, seeing how she's doing. And Summer asks how the talk with Amir was. And Jordan says, oh, it was really needed. And she feels like there were a lot of things said that she wishes weren't said, etc. And then Alex FaceTimes his brother, Al. Was his name? Was his brother named Al? It said on screen his brother was Al. So I'm like, is Alex and Al are the brothers? <laughs> that explains a lot. My older brother, Al Tariq. He said Al so, Tariq, yeah. but on screen it said his brother, Al. So I'm like, is it Al and Alex? Yeah, he said my older brother Al Tariq. So, all right. I guess that's I don't know. So um, I don't know if he's famous. I didn't look him up. Did you? Should we look him up? Um, I forgot to do that part. So um, right uh, I'm not sure that he is, but a cor- but basically he's a musical genius, according to Alex. And Alex says we are very different, but like so much alike. And music is like a uniting factor for us. So he wants to share, Alex wants to share his reflections on this amazing experience he's had this summer uh, by singing a song that they wrote three years ago. Like, well, is that really sharing reflections on the summer? If it's some, if something that was written three years before the summer, I'm not quite sure about that, but sure. So his name is Al Devon Tyree III. He's a music composer, founder and CEO of Al Classical Music LLC, a content creation and music publishing company. Okay. And um, I found him on the Instagram. There's some pictures of Alex with him, but he's not famous yet. Mm. So there's Al there's and Al. Can answer our question. Al and Al. Al and Al. Wasn't that like a, a stereo? place you get stereos alan l's i don't know <laughs> two l's oh so then preston um comes back from the store and jasmine is making candy dams and deviled eggs and he's like excuse me this is my cooking day so they all start cooking and jordan calls david her dad and talks about how stressed out she is and her dad's hilarious he's like who's starting with you yeah and she's like Dad, I just had a mental breakdown. It's like all my feelings erupted. And he goes, hmm, did you cuss somebody out? (laughs) (laughs) It's like, no, I just had a breakdown. Okay, I was just frustrated because there's this guy who would express interest in me, but I guess it's made everybody not want to get to know me, which annoyed me. And and the dad's basically like, so he's acting like uh, if it like, if, like you can't talk to someone else like it's that's like third grade shit she's like yeah she talks about being a daddy's girl and how the relationship changed after after she lost her mother and they became super tight um and that's where they are now in their life yes so then um jasmine is talking about soul food because they're cooking and amir is like oh my god what's in there ham hocks because you know he doesn't know anything about this stuff so jasmine's like yes uh, there's a history of getting what you can that using the cheapest cheapest ingredients and making something out of that and he's like wow that's the history of the food we're eating yeah so he's learning because he was raised really with his Lebanese side, so he's still like learning stuff about his heritage. And then Nick is on the phone with Tasia, his girlfriend. Um, I'm surprised it was not just like, not just like the a receptionist at a Hilton that he called up randomly, like, "Hi there, girlfriend Tasia. Um, I uh, I know that you're in another continent, which may mean that you may not be able to make it onto the television show that I'm filming, but surely you'll be here in time, right, for our finale?" And she's like, "Yes, I am. Is that what I was supposed to say? I'm sorry, I've got a lot of customers in line trying to check into this hotel right now." She's like, "Hold on, I'm sorry, I didn't finish. So you have 16 pairs of pants. That is amazing." <laughs> Love you, honey. Uh, So then uh, Simon is still being ridiculous. uh, And he's like, uh, oh, no. I put Simon comes down in a ridiculous outfit. Yeah. Like a big green Simon comes down in a ridiculous outfit. And Silas is like, wow, look at you. You look like white Rick Ross. (laughs) And Simon's like, okay, white Rick Ross. Um, And then it has something that says white Rick Ross. Yeah. Martha's Vineyard Records. 
Yeah, this is one of those uh, episodes where, like, after the ma- the main thing in the beginning is over, then they're just kind of like trying to make things entertaining by uh, putting a lot of graphics and silliness in the middle, just to sort of get through the episode. So everyone, uh, they sit down, they bless the food, they have uh, all this delicious looking food, and Amir's very excited. It's the first time he's ever fried ch- his own chicken. This was, by the way, I, the cooking for this meal was when Amir midway through just takes off his shirt and goes, "Oh, that's so much better." I was like. Please stop. Please don't do that. <laughs> That's too much. It's I'm too much sorry. I can't be with. attracted to you. You're not playing pool. So <laughs> can't even see your body right now. So they set up for the pride party and um, Preston gives everybody history about pride and talks about how it started in 1969 as a riot at the Stonewall Bar in New York City. And it's a revolution in love. Some people call it a riot, but it's a riot that also means revolution and love. So cheers to love and light. And so he's like, okay, so the thing I thought would be great for this is to see the straight men in the house come up with a quick dance routine. Hmm. It's like, oh, <laughs> really? I'm not really into this whole one gay person makes all the straight people do pride and do gay shit. I don't like it. Uh, I, I mean, I don't mind, it's but it's just, it's just not compelling television, to be honest. It's just like <laughs> it's annoying. It's like a, it's like a piece of television solely crafted or crafted solely to be used as an extra on BravoTV.com. Like, check out the guys on Summer House Martha's Vineyard trying to dance. So, um, so they do it. It's not whatever. So then Simon, uh, Simon's telling Bria, he's like, you think what's not very nice? And she's like, you're like super drunk. I'm not super drunk. Just like, yes, you are. I drank beer. It's like, yeah, well, you're drunk. Yeah, well, I really enjoyed it with the guys. Most of the majority, I really, they're like my friends now. All the guys in the house are friends. Simon has friends now. So, um, yeah, that's basically where we're at. People go to bed. Okay, so we go to Silas and Jasmine, and Silas is like, so, come on, do you want to circle back and talk about what happened today? And she's like, what part? And he's like, my pants, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, oh my God, the woman just made your dinner. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And she's like, why would you want to talk about that? And he's like, because I don't think you understand while I was mad. And um, he's like, you messed up my pants and everything you gave to fix the problem was very minimal. Go fuck yourself. Leave him. Sir, you are... How are you still... You can't have a job that requires two computer monitors um, and then not be able to f- be able to take out a stain from your own pants. I'm sorry. Do it yourself. Okay. Be a gentleman to yourself. Okay. So Jasmine's like, um, it's so easy for you to say I messed up some shit, isn't it? Your mentality is such a turnoff. It really is. And he goes, oh, my mentality is a turnoff. You fucked up my pants because you don't know how to use a fucking iron. I was like, I like... <laughs> Chuck this person out of the house. Kick him off the island, okay? Chuck him out of a fucking plane. Chuck him off of the earth. Who yeah. is this Oof, person? We don't need this person. Terrible. We don't need this person. So Jasmine's like, you know, I wish I could open the door so everybody could hear how you're talking to me right now. Uh, first of all, America is hearing how he's talking to you right now. And B, no one is surprised. Mm-hmm. No one. Okay, you're the only one who's surprised. So she's like, if we don't fix this, we might not have a home to come back to. I have nothing but resentment for you and him both at this point. I can't even believe you're with this person. Yeah. So then in the morning, I'm disgusted. Silas is still carrying on. He sort of goes up to uh, Jazz and passive aggressively and says, baby, I need to use your toothbrush because I used mine to clean my pants yesterday. Oh, fuck you. So I guess he did make an effort to clean his own things, but now he's throwing it in her face and she just doesn't respond, you know? Like, what happened? And he just stands there. Just go to the store. Go to the store yeah. and get a toothbrush and come back and brush your teeth. So people are waking up and she needs packs because um, she's got a, her flights in two hours. So she's going to somehow, I guess... Oh, never mind. I was thinking, like, she's going to take a ferry and then get to Logan Airport. I was, like, about to get mad at her about logistics. I was like, there's probably an airport on Martha's Vineyard. So then um, she basically gets, like, her goodbye because she's leaving before the finale. So she just talks about how, like, oh, I didn't expect this summer to get so serious, but, like, I had a great time with my girls, and girls' night was my favorite night, and I can't wait to come back here next summer, hopefully not as serious. Oh, and then she just flashes the camera. 
So she's out of there and she says bye to Alex and she's like, I don't really care what Alex thinks. Like, I'm not a confrontational person. Um, like, I just express my feelings anyway. So, like, let's just move on with our lives because I refuse to say sorry. Bye, Alex. Sorry. <laughs> So then um, Jason is in the kitchen and um, Jasmine's there and he's like, so how's the dream team doing? And she's like, fine until we got into an argument. And he's like, so, you know, he has this idea. He has this idea of what a wife should be. And then you have this idea of what a husband should be. And then you guys need to take both of your ideas and then fuse those ideas together and find the hap. Shut up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that advice is not good advice. No. You're the straight gay friend. Your advice should be that man is clearly abusive. Get the fuck out of there. Yeah, okay? exactly. So Jasmine makes Silas's breakfast. And she brings it to him and then he's just like eating it. He doesn't say thank you or anything. He's just like acting like he's in a diner and it was just placed right in front of him. And he's ignoring her while being on his computer. Yeah. You know? Ugh. So then and then he does Pain. then he's like done with it. So she goes, Um, I take it you're just not gonna finish this. And he goes, <laughs> Probably not, honestly. You know, I'm not good with like bread and potatoes and things like that. It's kind of, he's basically doing that thing of like, why would you make this food that I don't eat? You should know better by now. And she goes, but potatoes aren't bread. And he goes, starch. And he shakes his head. I mean, okay, you guys are married and you don't know he doesn't eat carbs. So <laughs> are you, now I'm like, are you putting potatoes in his breakfast to fuck with him? Because clearly you know he doesn't eat potatoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm only giving you that because I'm hoping that that's what you did to get some kind of revenge on this piece of shit. I'm hoping <laughs> that revenge. you at least had the self-respect to put some potatoes in this man's food. It also explains why Silas doesn't like J Jordan at all because Jordan is obsessed with potatoes. So Jasmine's like, she's like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Everyone says the first year of marriage is the hardest. Well, it doesn't matter if you're on marriage, if you're number one or you're number 30, like this guy is a piece of work and uh, he's gonna exhaust you no matter what year you're on. Yeah, fuck that guy. He takes her plate, she takes her plate and leaves and um, he just ignores her. And so she just stops at the door and turns back and stares at him. You need to get the fuck out of there. I can't, it's hard. I'm glad that next week is the season finale because I'm officially done with these two, both of you. Yeah, well, especially I him. can't believe that you would enable that behavior. You're way too smart for that. Like letting a man think that that's okay is not great. Oh yeah, no, he's like, he is terrible, absolutely terrible. I, and oh, yeah. he's getting roasted on Twitter and it's, it's so like validating to Good. watch. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there's gonna be a reunion on this show, but if there, I, like, I really want a reunion, like maybe just like a one episode reunion, just so he could be confronted with his behavior. But it probably, of course, Andy would be like, so, Silas, so you were uh, moccasins instead of loafers one night. What was that like? Okay, okay, now let's talk to the women for 45 minutes. Oh, well, I'm really hoping this gets to season two and she has divorced him by the time that starts. No, season, I, I want to have a season two, but season two, he's going to be on his um, uh, Refresh His Image campaign. So he'll be like super chill. He'll be like, hey, honey, what's what do you want? Like, whatever you want to make me for breakfast. Hey, I made breakfast for you, honey. It's going to be this super fake Silas. Well, I hope she sees her. I hope she sees what this is. I'm hoping this is like a Lindsay and uh, Everett season one, where she ends up leaving him and like goes on yeah. her own journey. Because I I don't know men men like that don't change. Nope, they do not. But uh, except get worse. Yeah. Know, so okay. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the end of Summer's note. House. Summer House Martha Vineyard, darling. Thanks everyone for being here. Go check out the video on Crap is on Demand. Go buy tickets to our shows in Boston and or Foxwoods. And we will catch you later this week. Bye everyone. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Alison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. Hava Nagila Weber. Jamie, she has no less namey. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. Kristen the Piston Anderson. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. You're never alone with Lazy. Monteleone. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. There ain't no problem that Sarah Salvia can't Salvia. Roo Roo La Roo. The Bay Area Betches. 
Betches. And our super premium sponsors, the incredible edible Matthew sisters. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. She's not harsh, she's Jill Hirsch. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Erica, 500 days of summers. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. We love him madly, it's Kyle Pod Shadley. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kennedy. Give him hell, Miss Noel. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. We want to hang with Liz Lang. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kutar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Your Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at Wondery.com survey. Celebrity beef, you never know if you're just going to end up on TMZ or trending on Twitter or in court. I'm Matt Belisai. And I'm Sydney Battle. And we're the hosts of Wondery's new podcast, Dis and Tell. Each episode explores a different iconic celebrity feud. From the buildup, why it happened, and the repercussions. What does our obsession with these feuds say about us? We're starting off with a pretty messy love triangle between Selena Gomez and Justin and Hailey Bieber. A seemingly innocent TikTok of Selena talking about her laminated eyebrows. It snowballed into a full-blown alleged feud. But it doesn't seem like fans are letting up anytime soon. Despite both Selena and the Biebers making public statements denying any bad blood. How much of this is teen jealousy and lovers quarreling? And how much of it is a carefully crafted narrative designed to sell albums? Follow Dis and Tell wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. Raising kids can be one of the greatest rewards of a parent's life. But come on, some days parenting is unbearable. I love my kid. But is a new parenting podcast from Wondery that shares a refreshingly honest and insightful take on parenting. Hosted by myself, Megan Gailey, Chris Garcia, and Kurt Braunohler, we will be your resident not-so-expert experts. Each week, we'll share a parenting story that'll have you laughing, nodding, and thinking, oh yeah, I have absolutely been there. We'll talk about what went right and wrong. What would we do differently? And the next time you step on yet another stray Lego in the middle of the night, you'll feel less alone. So if you like to laugh with us as we talk about the hardest job in the world, listen to I Love My Kid, but wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app.